Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morali. I'm an internal medicine doctor and an obesity medicine specialist. And this is what I call Dr. Morali Weighs In, where I share with you uh, my advice or recommendations around weight management, drawing from my own personal struggle with weight over, over my life, as well as my experience, my professional experience, trying to help patients uh, manage their weight over the last uh, 10 years. Today's topic I want to talk about or tackle stress eating. I think something that is very common, a lot of people deal with. I think um, if I'm being honest, I would say I deal with it myself. Um, and it's probably a lot more common nowadays because um, just for context sake, we are in the middle of uh, the corona coronavirus pandemic. Um, and I think it's stressing a lot of people out, including myself. So today I wanna to share with you about nine different things that I think might help you at home or wherever you are uh, better deal with stress eating. So let's get into it. So if we're gonna talk about stress eating, I think it's very important to talk about, well, really what is stress? Um, and the way I think about stress um, is I think about those National Geographic uh, documentaries, and if you just kind of go with me in your mind to, you know, we're on the Serengeti, and, you know, there's a gazelle, you know, just doing its thing, you know, eating the grass, enjoying life. This is a wonderful place, the Serengeti. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, this lion comes out and pounces and it's chasing the gazelle and the gazelle's going and it's just total drama. That moment, if, if you and I were in the gazelle's mind or if we were the gazelle at that moment, that gazelle is really feeling stressed. I mean, a lot of stress. Um, and let's just say for, for this story, that the gazelle gets away, the lion gets tired, gets pooped out and just kind of saunters off and just like, oh, you know, I didn't get the gazelle. Um, and the gazelle goes back to the herd. In the animal kingdom, the, the gazelle, once that event is over, the stress is gone, the stress response served its purpose to get the blood going to the muscles, to get the, you know, the, the, the gazelle going so it could, the fight or flight response um, and now it's over and so that the, the it worked stress its purpose for the physiologic purpose worked but in the human uh, we're a little bit different we you know the the line is gone but we're still running away from the line we're, we're, we're going over the event we're driving and we're like, oh man, that lion, ooh, it almost got me. Oh, that was a narrow one. Oh man, I just, I need to make sure there's not another lion back there. What if, you know, what if, uh, what if that happens to me again? And so that kind of keeps, keeps going in our mind because we have this intellect, we have this ability to remember and um, that stressful event can keep, you know, circulating in our mind. And so, what are the lions? What are the lions that are chasing us? Um, you know, these, I kind of break them down into four categories um, that I hear about very frequently or that I've experienced in, in my own life. Uh, one is uh, work. Work stresses us out. Our, um, our employers or our bosses, um, when we're feeling like we're under a microscope or being micromanaged or, you know, something like that, coworker issue, um, that can make us feel very stressed out. Um, work-related issues. Finances, big one, big, big, big problem uh, in terms of things that can make us feel stressed because it's, a, it's our security and everything. Um, very commonly, when I'm taking a weight history in my clinic, if I get to kind of through 2008 in that area, um, a lot of people lost their homes, other things, and guess what? They gained a lot of weight. There's a lot of stress eating that happened um, as a result of that. Uh, family or relationship issues. Very common examples here are problems with the parent or the child. Uh, you know, parent and child 
things um, can do that. Any kind of relationship can do that or, or child caring for an older parent, those types of issues. Lots of, lots of stuff there, you know, I mean, pick your example. Um, Jerry Springer, you know, yes. Uh, and then health, you know, our own health, you know, uh, worried about, oh, am I gonna get diabetes? Some of this, my family member has it, or I feel like my health is declining. These things can stress us out and these things can actually impact um, and, and create a lot of stress that we react to with eating. And it just turns out that guess what? Coronavirus hits every single one of those. Um, it's affecting our work, it's affecting our finances, it's affecting our family lives and our relationships. Um, it's affecting our health, uh, you know, very much so. There's all this in unpredictability and fear and there is a tremendous amount of stress. Uh, if you're not feeling it, um, you know, that's good for you. I'm definitely feeling it um, as a healthcare worker, as a physician. Um, so, so that's kind of how I and think about stress and what it is. So what does it do? What does it do to us in, in, in terms of our eating? Well, number one, it affects, well, it affects what we eat and drink, um, when we eat or drink things and how much we, we eat or drink. So the what comfort food, um, you know, stress raises our cortisol levels and, you know, their endocannabinoid pathways, we can go into all kinds of things. But essentially, very often when we're stressed, we crave sweets and starches and these types of things. Um, and you find people, you know, digging into that ice cream or the chips or things like that, and that's very common. Um, Oreos would be my kind of problem uh, thing or, or, or uh, tortilla chips, if I'm being honest. Um, it impacts the time people might eat at night, people might graze and pick at things, you know, sun, nuts, sunflower seeds, chips, whatever. Um, and how much some, some of us are volume eaters. We, you know, when we're stressed, we just eat a lot and, you know, large volumes of food or variations of all those things. So kind of covered what stress is and how it can impact our eating and drinking behavior. So what can we actually do about it? Number one, take a break. If take whatever it is that's causing your stress, uh, try to take a break from that. Try to create some space between you and that thing. Um, if you know, if if uh, it's just cause and effect. If X is causing Y, and I take away X, then I'm going to have less of Y. So, if, so if this particular person or this particular situation is creating a lot of stress for me and that's gonna cause me to stress eat, reducing my exposure to that thing is gonna help with managing stress eating. So taking coronavirus, for example, people are glued to the TV and watching the news and all this stuff, don't do that. If, if coronavirus is stressing you out, um, take a break from the news, read the news, don't watch it. Um, you know, take some time during the day where you get updated on what's happening and then, you know, cut it off. Um, so in that way, try to create some space between you and that thing that is stressing you out. Um, and this requires us to really think and, and really reflect and like, you know, that situation made me feel really stressed out. Maybe that's causing my stress. Uh, very often we just kind of power through life and we don't really think about what's going on. We just go the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Um, that may be one of the good things about coronavirus is that it's making us all slow down and we can kind of be like, oh, you know, I feel less stressed now, maybe because I'm not around those people at work or I'm not in that situation. So taking a break, very important first step. Second step, so taking a break is one thing, but now giving your mind some meaning and purpose, um, this is very important. So not just kind of have a break and creating a vacuum, your mind can keep spinning in terms of finding something else to be stressed about. But meaning and purpose, meaning and purpose essentially gives our mind a direction, uh, something to aspire to, something to actually work towards or achieve, um, and it can be very stress relieving um, to have that meaning and purpose. Um, I was told recently that, you know, uh, outpatient physicians like myself 
may need to go into the hospital and start managing patients in the hospital. Something I haven't done in a long time. Very stressful. Um, so what did I do? I started reading about all of the kind of critical care subjects and everything else. I started finding good resources for that. And I actually said to my colleagues, hey, a lot of us might be in this situation. Let's put together uh, some materials so that all of us would be you know, better educated about coronavirus so that we're, if we're called in, um, we'll, we'll have um, better information. That made me feel really good. I felt like, awesome, you know, I'm gonna keep researching and finding these materials. Um, it, it, it can really help that meaning and purpose. Anytime you are applying yourself in the service to something bigger than yourself, it makes whatever stressing you out smaller and whatever you're trying to achieve or help, if there are other people you're trying to help, it makes you feel better. There are people who are making masks at home for you know healthcare workers, thank you for that. Um, there are people who are going grocery shopping for elderly neighbors. Um, these things are ways that make us, you know, help us, uh, you know, feel proactive in a situation that's making us feel um, helpless or, or something like that. Uh, third thing, connect with other people. Uh, social distancing does not necessarily mean social isolation. Um, in any stressful situation, if there's another person or another group of people that are going through something similar as you, um, just sharing your experiences and kind of, oh yeah, you know, I felt like that too. And oh man, you can't find any toilet paper? Well, neither can I. And this, what are we gonna do? I don't know, we gotta get creative. You know, so things like that, um, you might find humor, you might find just validation. Everybody's going through coronavirus, uh, you know, trauma in different ways and sharing how you're feeling about it. Lots of humorous stories, you know, where people are circulating, other images, stuff like that. Um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's a healthy thing to do. Fourth thing, and this is probably one of my favorite uh, techniques to reduce stress, and that is gratitude. Uh, it is very hard to have a feel grateful for something and feel stressed out at the same time. Try it. Uh, and I think the reason for that is because stress is, is really about lack of control and unpredictability and fear and all this stuff. And gratitude is the opposite of that. Gratitude is, oh, you know, I'm so thankful for what I have and I'm so grateful for, for this experience or, you know, if, if I had to think about what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for the, the additional time I'm having with my family now. Um, I'm grateful for my health right now. I'm grateful for stellar colleagues who are out there making it happen. I mean, going to the hospital, the nurses, the, the, st the staff who are cleaning the rooms, I'm so grateful for those people um, and then the excellent work that they're doing. And this is my small contribution to try to help the people who are at home who don't have coronavirus. Um, that's my meaning and purpose. That's my feeling of serving. Um, that's my, uh, I'm grateful that I have this knowledge that I can share with you, uh, those types of things. So gratitude, take time, think of counter blessings, think about things that you're really grateful for. It can be very basic, um, but create a list and, and think about reading over that. Um, in the evening or in the morning, whatever, make some time for that. Fifth thing, these are all really important. That's why I'm sharing them with you. Uh, but this is probably, in my opinion, the most important health behavior that will help not only with the stress part, but also the eating part, and that is sleep. I have a whole TED Talk where I talk about sleep and the importance of sleep. Um, it's called, um, what's it called? Uh, it's called... How to make hard things easy and lose weight too. Check it out. I'll put it in the link in the description. But sleep is critical because everything you have to do to be a healthy person, you have to do when you're awake. And so if you're not sleeping, your body's not gonna be functioning well, the stress hormones are gonna be up, your appetite's gonna be harder to control, you're gonna have more cravings for, for sweets and, and uh, starches, you're gonna have less resilience, less ability to deal with 
you know, negativity and all that kind of stuff. Your willpower, just bad news. So get some sleep, set a bedtime, set a wake up time, stay away from screens, um, create a really good, dark, cool, silent, you know, or, you know, white noise sleep environment. These are really important things for, for your sleep. Uh, the sixth thing would be uh, physical activity. And I noticed I didn't say exercise. Just being physically active. Being physically active, cleaning your house, going for a walk, uh, you know, going outside. Being, being physically active is better than not doing anything. Sitting is the new smoking. I should be standing when I'm doing, while I'm doing this video, I guess. Um, uh, but being physically active, very important. Not so, not as important as 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 eating healthy when it comes to weight loss, but physical activity as a health behavior, very important. It helps us. We're happier when we're more physically active. Um, we live longer, irrespective if you're a smoker, if you're obese, if you have diabetes. It does not matter. Someone who has all of those problems and is physically active will live longer than someone who doesn't have any of those problems and is sedentary. You know, that, that is solid science on that, physical activity. Um, interesting fact, people who exercise regularly are in less credit card debt. Another bonus, okay. The next three things have less to do with the stress, they have more to do with the eating. So what to do about the eating part. Um, so that comes into the subject of meal planning. So meal planning, notice I didn't say food logging or meal logging or whatever, it's planning. So if you take the, if you take the thinking out of eating, the mindless eating or the stress eating, you know, you have less of an opportunity to do that. What do I mean, I mean by that? I mean, having a plan for what you're gonna to eat tomorrow. Very commonly in my clinic, I'll ask a patient, what's for lunch tomorrow? And if the person doesn't know, I know that there's a fundamental issue with uh, you know, meal planning. They're not planning their meals. Less likely that this person is gonna probably lose weight from week to week. Knowing what you're gonna eat in advance, very, very important. A day in advance, in my opinion, is very important. Having a schedule. This, I'm gonna eat at this time, this time, this time, and this time, and this is what I'm gonna eat, and it's all planted ahead. I don't have to think about it. Um, if you are in a situation where you're having an impulse to eat, try to do something else. Um, if you have to do something with your mouth, drink some water, um, a very a good thing. Um, if you have to have something with flavor in it, for me, I'm a sweet eater, I'm a you know a sweet tooth. Bitter flavors really help me suppress that uh, sweet tooth. And so I will, you also often see me drinking uh, decaf, black decaf coffee, uh, which kind of, in my mind, helps me uh, reduce my sweet cravings. You can try it if you want. Last thing. So this is the ninth thing. And that is, so drink water was the eighth thing. Last thing is, if you do end up losing control, you stress eat and, and that happened, please forgive yourself. It's, it's not gonna do, it's not gonna help to beat yourself up, feel the guilt and the shame and just kind of take a bath in guilt and shame. Um, that's not gonna help you better manage your weight. It's not gonna prevent more stress eating. In fact, it's gonna promote stress eating. So I would say, give yourself a break. Uh, you know, stress eating is a common thing. A lot of us deal with it. Myself, as an obesity medicine specialist, I, I struggle with it myself. Um, and so uh, give yourself that, that forgiveness. Forgive yourself. So I hope, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll try to summarize the points in the description below. And again, because of coronavirus, I feel like this is the best way that I'm going to be able to... to send these messages out into the world to my patients who I'm not able to see in my clinic. I miss you. Um, and uh, I'll be trying to post a video every week. Thanks again for watching. If you have your own tips for how to deal with stressful eating in a healthy way, feel free to share them in the comments below. It may help somebody else. Also, 
If you have any other questions or ideas for other videos that you would like me to weigh in on, please share those as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. See you next time.